belong to God. See, you are the steward of your children. How well are you using that opportunity of stewardship? How well are you using that? Are you making the sacrifices that you need to for us to be able to say, you know what? Christ is going to be the priority of our family. I know it's Mother's Day, but I'm going to call out the dads real quick. How are you leading your family spiritually? It's great that you're pulling the paycheck, and it's great that you can provide, but are you providing for them spiritually? That's not the mother's job. Your children belong to God. Teach them about the one they belong to. They are God's children. They need to realize that, that they are a precious daughter or son of God. But second of all, Hannah understood she had to release him. It wasn't just the fact that, okay, I understand my son belongs to God or my daughter belongs to God, but we have to be able to release them. And we're not able to release until we understand that they belong. But are we willing to do that release? And see, a lot of us want to hold on to that relationship, that we want to hold on to those things. We want to hold on to our children. We want to make sure that they're safe and they're protected. And that's all good and well. But we have to be able to release them to God and say, God, it's whatever you have for their life. See, my parents were more than willing to do that. They were just ready to get rid of me. No, I'm just kidding. But they, they understood that I belong to God. They understood that they're going to have to release me to God and His will for my life. And I can remember the day that I told my father that God has called me into the ministry. It was over by uh, the suit coat rack at Walmart. And I was like, hey, I'm going to need more of these. I'm going to be a pastor one day. And he about broke down crying there because he understood the importance of that. And he knew that he was going to have to release me and allow me to go wherever God wanted me to go. And he told me this before I left here to come to Alaska. He said, son, I know you're going where you need to go because you're following me after God. And that will make me more proud than anything else that you can do. And so I want to challenge your parents. Are you willing to say, hey, my child belongs to God, and that I'm willing to release them to whatever God calls him? What if your child comes to you and says, hey, I've been called to the mission field, or I've been called to be a pastor, or a, a music leader, or a children's director? What is your reaction going to be? Are you going to be there celebrating with them? Or are you going to celebrate it then in the back and be like, man, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe God's calling to do this. God, why are you, you allowing my child to go through this? I know what some of these pastors have to go with. I know what the missionaries have to go with. I know there's going to be t uh, hard times for them. I don't know if I can do this, God. Is that going to be your mindset where you're like, God, I can't believe you called them to to this type of ministry. Why couldn't you have called them to a safer job? But see, we need to understand what it says in Psalms 127, verse 3 and 4. It says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. See, this is a picture of saying, hey, our children are to be used to go out and spread the good news of the gospel, that they're arrows against the enemy. Are we allowing our children to be able to do that? Hannah was all about that. She knew that her child, Samuel, belonged to him. She knew that she had to release them. But not only do we see sacrifice, we also see service. And I kind of want to shift our focus here to the youth and the children that are in this room. Our service, what does it look like? See, God honors a life that is fully given to him. God honors that. We see that also in, in Hannah's life as well as Samuel's. Hannah, Hannah was fully given to prayer. As you read uh, through the first couple of chapters of Samuel, you see that there was countless times where Hannah was on her knees praying. Parents, are you praying for your children? That's a service that you can do. But for the, the, the kids that are in the room, the students that are in the room today, service, how does your service look like? See, Samuel, he was a boy that was given to the Lord's work. He understood the authority of, of who Eli was, the priest that was there that was 
leading him in, in spiritual instruction. If he was willing to respond to the voice of God when he called him. But not only are you to be a servant and give your life fully to him, but I believe that God has a purpose for each and every one of you in this room. See, I believe God has called you for a purpose for him. He has a special plan for each of you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. See, Samuel began under Eli and, and served under him for a while until God finally changed the plan for Samuel's life and gave him the plan of prophet. And you can see as he anointed different kings, he anointed David and the life calling that he had because God had a purpose for him. And I believe God has a purpose for your students and your children. Are we willing to allow them to follow after that? <clears throat> See, and that's one of the big questions that students always ask. What is God's will for my life? How am I supposed to know what God wants me to do? And it's very simple. The scripture lays it out in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18. It says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for your life in Christ Jesus. So we must rejoice. We must pray. And we must give thanks. Those are three simple things that God has called for the will of our life. So is that it? No, there, there's even more. In Matthew chapter 22, it says this in verse 37 and 38. You shall love the Lord your God with, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. So we're to love God. Adding to those other three things. And is that all? No, it's not because God says in the next verse after that, verse 39, it says, And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So rejoice. Pray, give thanks, love God, and love others. See, that's what we want for our children. That is the desire that I have for my daughter, that she would follow after God's will for her life and whatever he call. That I'm willing and able to say, God, she's your child. Are you willing to do the same thing? See, this morning it all boils down to two words, sacrifice and service. As I hand this back over to Pastor Brad to close this out, I just want to encourage the students here today. I'm for you, your parents are for you, and God is for you. And He has great plans for your future. You know, sacrifice and service really sums things up. I have a former student who is in ministry. Um, probably 2,000 miles or more from where his family lives. It was they were willing to release him. I have a former uh, volleyball player uh, that I coached who is in New Guinea right now as a missionary. I have a former wrestler, he's a state champion wrestler from me in high school, walked away from a career in finance and, and, and a good income. He's a missionary in Africa today. I have a good friend who uh, who got called mission field when she was a, a young teenager, but God didn't call her husband. And after her husband went to be with the Lord, then she stepped forward and said, now Lord, now's the time. And she's serving as a missionary. You see, it's never too late for us. But it is about sacrifice and it's about service. Mothers know that if you sacrifice years of your life, the places you could have gone, the things you could have done, the, the stuff you could have had in, in order to pour your hearts and your lives into your children. Sacrifice and service. That sounds a lot like Jesus, doesn't it? This is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Mark chapter 10, verse 45, Jesus said, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many, a life of sacrifice, a life of service, 
That was the life of Jesus. And why would he do it? Well, why would the God of heaven, who simply by speaking a word 